All right, let's do an example with a hypothesis test that's involving um, some null hypothesis for a mean and an alternative hypothesis that we're going to test against. Um, and then we're going to do a two-tailed test. So past experiences tell us that students that take the Math 119 final exam are, are normally distributed with a mean of 75 and a variance of 36. This year, the class of 16 uh, students averaged 79. So is this score significantly different than past students? So the test that we're going to look at um, states that the mean for students and the expected mean in fact is 75. So this is the null hypothesis that in fact um, the mean is 75 and that's what's expected. So the alternative hypothesis is that for these students um, their mean is greater than 75. And so this was a what the original question was and then a test was done and we came up with a statistic. Um, and then let's take our test statistic and convert it to another and convert it to a z-value. So this is our real test statistic. Our test statistic is this right here, x bar minus mu. Alright, so let's see how far our sample is from the mean. Divided by the standard error, where the standard error is sigma over the square root of the sample size. And so if we plug these values in here, L oh, and at what level of significance? So the level of significance at which we're going to make our decision is 5%. Um, 5% is the level of significance. Um, so let's uh, so now that we have our test, we have developed a sample. We can now figure out the test statistic here. And the test statistic in this case, um, let's see, we have our 79 minus 75. Um, and then the standard deviation, we know that sigma squared is 36, so that means that sigma, since sigma squared is 36, the variance, we know that the standard deviation is the square root of that, so that's 6 divided by the square root of the sample size. The sample size um, was 16, so the square root of that is 4. Um, So n equals 16, the square root of n is the square root of 16, so that's 4. And so our test statistic um, is 4 divided by 6 over 4, which is 4 um, divided by 3 halves, or eight-thirds or two and two-thirds. So our, um, our test statistic is 2.667. Now remember we're going to look at this at the alpha equals 0 0.05 level of significance and it's a right-tailed test. So that test that we're looking at 
the, the rubric of sorts looks like this. So the original, since this was 5%, um, the critical value that we're going to have to compare a test the statistic to is 1.645, um, a typical value. Had I chosen maybe 0 0.01, then we would have ended up with a different critical value where we take the inverse norm of 0 0.01. And if you find out what that is, let's see. Um, so if we were, yes, yeah, so we were using 0 0.01, that would be 2.3. Um, 2.326 would be the critical value for a confidence level of 0 0.01. So let's go ahead and use our 0 0.05. This is what we're going to compare everything to. And when we go in, and figure out what our test statistic is, we see that it is 2.667. That 2.667 is into the rejection region. We have a value that has a probability of occurring by chance that's less than 5%. Um, so it's far enough out, that 2.667, that we can say that um, we have strong evidence against the null hypothesis. Um, so it is significantly different and that the mean for this class appears to truly be um, something significant. So we're going to reject the null hypothesis that um, that the class average is 75. So um, since our test statistic, his distance is actually far enough away um, from the critical value. So since it's greater than the critical value, um, that's strong enough evidence for us to reject H0, the null hypothesis. Um, and then the other way that we want to consider this is that we want to figure out what the p-value is. So we have two different ways of coming up with this answer, one or two. Either one is, um, is fine, but usually one is a little bit easier. The other one is to look at the p-value. And so the p-value for this test statistic um, we had 2.667, and so that would be um, equivalent to finding the likelihood of being that far or further from um, the null hypothesis. So the p-value for that is going to be normal, CDF, I'll abbreviate here starting from 2.667, so 2 and 2 thirds. Uh, let's go ahead and write that as 2.6667, all the way out to infinity. So um, we should be able to get the area for that. So let's go into our calculator and let's do normal CDF. Let's go to 0.66667 all the way out to infinity. And since we're dealing with C values, leave those at 0 and 1 on this calculator. And we get um, 0 0.0038. And then just to remind us, if you have one of the older calculators and you have to put this information directly into the function, um, by leaving out mu and sigma for normal CDF like that, it's the same thing as determining the z-values. So 0 0.0038 um, 
which is indeed the p-value that is less than alpha, which is less than 0 0.05. Um, so that's improbable enough as far as happening by chance for us to reject the null hypothesis. So these two methods, the p-value method comparing it to the level of significance versus comparing it to um, comparing the test statistic to the critical value. Um, so those two ways are going to always give us the same result. And then one last look at this is going to be um, how do we make that decision based on the function in the calculator so let's put those values into the calculator. Stats, tests, it's a z-test, and the setup here is how we're going to set, us, set this up in our calculator. So we have mu equal to 75. Um, the standard deviation was 6. We were given, given a variance of 36 square root of that. We get a mean for our sample. We found our value to be 79. And out of how many students in total? I think we said 16 students. And this is a right tailed test. So we have that set up for a right tail test. And let's go ahead and hit calculate. And again, we get our 2.667. So, so our calculator, I'm not going to paste, gives us the same values. Um, so our test statistic that our calculator gives us is 2, 2 and 2 thirds, 2.667, and a p-value of 0 0.0038, same. Um, and so we're able to do a right tail test um, in using both kind of processes. And both of those processes tell us we don't, um, that that our result is improbable enough for us to reject the null hypothesis.